In September this year, Congo Brazzaville will host the 50th anniversary of the All Africa Games. The first games took place in Brazzaville in 1965. This year, all the continent's top athletes will return to Brazzaville for what promises to be the greatest athletic event of the decade. Now, to tell us more about this is uh, the author of Connect with the Continent, a man who keeps us up to date with the latest trends in Africa. He travels all over the continent. But, Terry, before we start with the All Africa Games, I want to start in Kenya. We, we see there's uh, the insurgency that's going on. Really, really sad news. It seems Africa is constantly at war with itself. You know, it's very sad news. I think it's a response to President Kenyatta's crackdown on corruption and, and, and his military about to sort of move quite heavily against Al-Shabaab in the north. You know, it's all, all, not all bad news even. I mean, if you look to the west, if you look at the recent elections in Nigeria, um, you know, Africa's largest democracy, you have uh, now President-elect Buhari coming in um, in a very, by all means, peaceful um, election and, and President Goodluck Jonathan kind of congratulating him. So, so, you know, it's not all doom and gloom. There is, uh, there is brightness to be had, not as bright as your shirt, by the way, but yeah, you know, there, you know, Terry, there's a lot of good a, news on the continent at the it's moment. That, it's that kind of week, you know, we can't all be grey and blues all the time. Let's talk about Nigeria, though. I, I was very impressed with what I saw. Um, you know, the ticket that, that General Buhari kind of ran on a little bit was, was heavy anti-corruption. We know Nigeria suffers from, at times, institutionalised corruption. Mm. Do you think he could really make a dent or, or, or turn the ship, as it were, away from the kind of corrupt practices we've seen in recent times? Well, you know, he's, he's known to be Mr. Incorruptible. Um, you know, he has been in power before, uh, very briefly, in uh, I think it was 95, or sorry, 85, um, when there was a military coup. Uh, and uh, he's spoken out very strongly around, first of all, stabilizing the country in the north from a military point of view, and then dealing very um, uh, heavy-handedly with corruption. So I, I think Nigerians believe that he's a man for the job. That's why they put him in power. I mean, it's the first time since 1960 uh, that there has been a president who's not part of the sort of PDP. Um, so it's a very, very big step. And I was on the phone this morning to some colleagues in Lagos, and they are absolutely ecstatic. They're hoping the transition will go well, and they're thrilled that he is the, he's there, and they reckon he's the guy. Tell us about the mood. The mood must be quite jubilant in, uh, in Nigeria at the moment. But, but, but then there is a threat of this transition not always being entirely peaceful. You have a different view, I would think. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think um, once you have the leader of the opposition, the now opposition party, or, or the PEP, con conceding defeat and conceding defeat quite gracefully and being acknowledged for that internationally, they're already talking that he's going to get the Mo Ibrahim Prize yes. at the end of this year. Uh, you have a, you know, a population that is just you know, tired of, of nonsense. They want strong leadership. They want direction. And you know, because he's coming from the north and he's essentially uh, a Muslim president, I think you're going to see uh, uh, that's where most of the, the negativity and most of the drama happens. You're going to yeah. see a lot of support. He also won Lagos State, um, uh, which is quite an important economic front. So I think you're going to see a, a slightly bumpy transition, yeah. but by Nigerian standards, pretty smooth. And, and his running mate was Christian, which I thought also sent all the right messages. But let's move on to, let's move on to, to Congo Brazzaville, or 50th anniversary of the All-Africa Games. What does it mean for Congo Brazzaville? And, and, and talk us through the importance of the All-Africa Games. Well, well, this is huge. I mean, the All-Africa Games is essentially where all the top athletic talent from across the continent comes together every four years. The last games were in Mozambique in 2011. They were, they were not a great success. And um, the brothers, Brazilians have taken this very, very seriously. Even as early as last year, they kicked in with the planning. They are planning to put a real spectacular together to welcome um, Africa back to the genesis of, of athletics and, and, and the All Africa Games, which, as you, as you indicated, was in 65 in Brazzaville. The president has come out very strongly. Um, I met a few weeks ago with the chef de mission for, for the Games. And that entire team is, is, is convinced and uh, assured everybody that they're going to pull off a, an amazing spectacle for everybody across the continent to see. Tell us about Brazzaville. I know you visited there a lot and, and you've had a lot of fun in Brazzaville. It's a city that, that, that sits uh, right, well, right across the Congo River from Kinshasa and, and really looks at it almost, doesn't it? It's crazy. I mean, you have these two capital cities sitting there staring at each other across the river. On the one side, you have Brazzaville. You have five kilometers of water, and then you have uh, Kinshasa. Uh, and they don't always like each other. And in fact, the last time I was there a few weeks ago, they were playing each other in one of the uh, last round games. Um, and uh, Brazil, or Congo beat Brazzaville, and they weren't happy. Yeah, they, they were not happy. But the, the expectation 
the expectation is that uh, that this will be the the the, the, the kind of sh sort of shot in the arm that Brazzaville needs to 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 really re-establish itself. Completely. I mean, the last major sporting activity that took place in the Congo Basin was when uh, Ali was there in the 60s. The and rumble I, in the, the jungle. The rumble in the jungle. And I think they're looking to replicate that. Oh, fantastic news. That's great. I'm sure, K Terry, you'll be there. And I know you'll, you'll keep us updated, not just there, but what's happening in Nigeria on your travels. Of course, uh, you can download some of Terry's travels of, also on, on our social pages. And uh, and uh, I've got a web address here, Terry, where, where, you, where, you, where you went on a jet ski, is that right? Yeah, I, I, I kind of said, you know, I'm in Brazzaville, I had a couple of hours there, what's the craziest thing I could do on that day? And I said, well, let me see if I can jet ski from Brazzaville across the river to Kinshasa. Which you did? Which I did, sort, and, sort of. And, and you can download that on our page, we'll make it available for everyone. Thanks very much, Terry. Uh, it's always nice to have Terry with us. Terry travels all over the African continent. He tells us what's trending, what people are doing. And the picture emerging is a very positive one. Africa is a continent, a place on the march. Thanks, Terry.